Iran is the latest country working to acquire hypersonic missile. Unveiled its new hypersonic missile, the Fata 2. Hypersonic missiles are the new frontier of military technology. These weapons can travel at speeds of over Mach 5 or five times the speed of sound, making them extremely difficult to intercept or evade. Several nations, such as Russia, China, India, and the United States, have been developing and testing their own versions of hypersonic missiles aiming to gain an edge in the global arms race. But now, a new player has entered the scene, Iran. The Islamic Republic has recently revealed a new hypersonic missile months after the unveiling of its first ever hypersonic missile. The new weapon could pose a serious threat to Israel and the U.S., as well as other regional rivals. So what makes Iran's hypersonic missile so troubling? And what does this mean for the balance of power in the Middle East? Join us as we take a look at Iran's insane new hypersonic missile. Before we go into detail, let's explain how a hypersonic missile works. A hypersonic missile is a type of weapon that can fly through the atmosphere at a speed five times the speed of sound, or Mach 5. Unlike conventional ballistic missiles, which follow a fixed trajectory, hypersonic missiles can maneuver and change course during flight, making them harder to detect and intercept. Hypersonic missiles can carry either conventional or nuclear warheads and can strike targets at long distances in a matter of minutes. There are two main ways to launch a hypersonic missile, either from a rocket booster or from a bomber aircraft. The missile then uses a special engine called a scramjet, which compresses and ignites the air that flows into it to sustain its high speed. A scramjet engine does not need to carry oxygen unlike a regular rocket engine, which makes the missile lighter and more efficient. However, a scramjet engine only works at supersonic speeds, so the missile needs to be accelerated by another means before it can activate its scramjet. These weapons could provide a significant advantage in the global arms race as well as pose a serious threat to the stability and security of the world. And now, Iran has just unveiled the Fatah 2 hypersonic glide vehicle, or HGV, surpassing the previous Fatah model unveiled earlier this year. Unlike traditional ballistic warheads that follow predictable trajectories, the HGV offers unparalleled maneuverability as it gracefully glides towards an intended target after launch. The HGV can also change its speed and direction in mid-flight, making it extremely difficult to intercept or track by enemy radars. This means that Iran has joined the exclusive ranks of China and Russia. This elite group of nations possesses missiles with extraordinary agility and the capability to traverse vast distances. Tehran made it abundantly clear that this missile could effortlessly breach any enemy defenses, serving as a stern warning to regional adversaries, including Israel. The introduction of the Fatah missile was also a groundbreaking moment for Iran because it became the first nation in the entire Middle East to possess a hypersonic weapon that surpassed the speed of sound by over five times. The introduction of a second and more potent hypersonic missile within months of unveiling the first has been touted as an exceptional feat by pro-Iran military watchers. Iran revealed the new missile, Fatah 2, on November 19th, but it did not disclose its specifications. Based on the information Iran provided in June about the first hypersonic missile, Fatah 1, it is likely that the Fatah 2 has a longer range and a higher speed. According to the Iran Revolutionary Guard Corps, the Fatah 1 is a hypersonic ballistic missile that can travel up to Mach 15, or 15 times the speed of sound, and has a range of 1,400 kilometers. They also said that they plan to increase the missile range to 2,000 kilometers in the future. An open-source intelligence analyst and military technology expert who uses the alias Potteramus on Platform X, a social media platform for sharing and discussing military-related topics, analyzed the capabilities of the two Iranian hypersonic missiles in a thread. Panoramas compared the pictures of the Fatah 1 and the Fatah 2 and concluded that the Fatah 1 is a hypersonic ballistic missile and the Fatah 2 is a hypersonic cruise missile. He explained that the difference between the two types of missiles is in their flight trajectories and maneuverability. A hypersonic ballistic missile like the Fatah 1 is launched into a high-altitude suborbital flight path and then re-enters the atmosphere at a very steep angle and high speed. This makes it hard to intercept, but also limits its ability to change direction or target. A hypersonic cruise missile like the Fatah 2 flies at a low-altitude atmospheric flight path can accelerate to hypersonic speeds using a 
scramjet engine. This gives it more flexibility and agility to evade obstacles and adjust its course or target. Panoramas suggested that the Fatah 2 might have a longer range than the Fatah 1 as it can use the air as fuel and does not need to carry a large amount of propellant. He also speculated that the Fatah 2 might have a higher speed than the Fatah 1 as it can maintain a constant hypersonic velocity throughout its flight, while the Fatah 1 might lose some of its speed during its re-entry phase. Pateramas also compared the advantages and disadvantages of the Fatah 1 and the Fatah 2 for different scenarios. He predicted that the Fatah 2 would be more suitable for launching a surprise attack as it would fly closer to the ground, follow a less predictable path, and be able to evade or counter the enemy's mid-course defense systems. On the other hand, he argued that the Fatah 1 would be more effective in overcoming the enemy's terminal defense systems as it would maneuver at higher speeds and altitudes. He also pointed out that the Fatah 1 would be cheaper to produce than the Fatah 2 as it would require less sophisticated technology and materials. The announcement of a second hypersonic missile by Iran has raised eyebrows among international observers who wonder how Iran has managed to acquire such advanced hypersonic capabilities despite being under severe economic sanctions. They also question how the U.S., which is considered to be the global leader in military technology, has failed to develop and deploy an operational hypersonic weapon. The IRG GC Aerospace Force Commander Brigadier General Amir Ali Hajizada boasted that Iran has become the fourth country in the world to possess hypersonic technology without naming the other three countries. At the time, a military expert from the region who did not wish to be quoted told Eurasia Times, in the absence of any substantial evidence, it is hard to believe that they have a sophisticated technology that even the most technologically advanced countries are struggling with. Tehran is bluffing or highly exaggerating its capabilities. It is more of an info war, just like we see between Russia and Ukraine. Not everyone is convinced by Iran's claims of having hypersonic missiles. Some military analysts in the region have expressed doubt and skepticism about Iran's capabilities and credibility. One of them is Abhijit Ayermatra, a military expert and a senior fellow at the Institute of Peace and Conflict Studies IPCS think tank based in New Delhi, India. He told Eurasian Times, a news website that covers Asia and Europe, that he does not trust anything that Iran says unless he sees a test. He said that Iran has a history of making false or exaggerated claims about its weapons development. He cited several examples of Iran's alleged mock-ups of stealth aircraft, stealth warships, and various missiles that never materialized. He called Iran's hypersonic missile program a complete sham. He also explained that achieving hypersonic speed is not a big deal, but maintaining it is a big challenge. He said that any object can reach hypersonic sonic speed if it is propelled by a ballistic missile motor, but the real question is whether it can sustain that speed by itself and whether the motor can be miniaturized enough to fit into the missile. He said that these are huge technological gaps that Iran has to overcome. Iran's announcement of a second hypersonic missile has caused alarm and anxiety among its regional rivals, especially Israel, which fears that Iran could use its hypersonic weapons to launch a surprise attack on its territory. A prominent Iranian newspaper warned in November of 2022 that Iran's new hypersonic missile could reach Israel in less than seven minutes. The threat became more real when Iran's Navy commander, Rear Admiral Saran Arani, declared on July 3rd that Iran would equip its indigenous Damaran II destroyer, which is expected to join the naval fleet soon, with a hypersonic missile. This could create a perilous situation for the U.S. naval forces that operate in the waters near the Red Sea, as they would have little time to react or defend themselves against Iran's hypersonic strike. Meanwhile, the U.S. is lagging behind its adversaries in the hypersonic race as it faces difficulties and delays in testing its weapons. The U.S. Army and Navy have been working together on a common hypersonic glide body that could be used for both the Army's land-based Dark Eagle system and the Navy's sea-based conventional prompt strike system. However, the U.S. has not achieved a successful test of its hypersonic weapon, while Iran, Russia, and China have already demonstrated their capabilities. 
Amid some hiccups in hypersonic weapons testing, the Army's chief weapons buyer hinted that the military is unlikely to meet its objective of putting its first batch of Dark Eagle hypersonic missiles into service by the end of the year. The system's crucial flight test, which was planned for October 26th at Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, was aborted due to a problem detected before launch. The Army's top acquisition official, Doug Bush, said earlier this month that he could not reveal the details of the problem, but that it prevented the test from happening. He said that the Army was working with the Navy and the Air Force to resolve the issue and reschedule the test. The Navy also faced a glitch in its hypersonic weapons test in June of 2022 when it launched launched the IRCPS missile at the Pacific Missile Range facility. The missile experienced an in-flight anomaly that affected the data collection for specific flight segments. The Air Force has been struggling to pursue two different hypersonic weapon programs, the AGM-183 air-launched rapid response weapon and the hypersonic attack cruise missile. The former failed at a test in April of 2022, and the latter has not yet reached a testing phase. The U.S. is reportedly considering focusing on on HACM and ending the AARW testing. This defense exhibition by Iran is very significant as it coincides with the rising tensions in the Middle East, where Iran has warned Israel and the U.S. to stop their attacks on the Gaza Strip. The U.S. has responded by increasing its military presence in the region, sending two aircraft carriers, several ships, and more than 2,000 Marines to the Middle East. Iran's display of its advanced military equipment, including a hypersonic missile, is likely to attract the attention of the U.S., which is concerned about Iran's influence and ambitions in the region. Iran's hypersonic missile could pose a serious threat to the U.S. and its allies as it could evade their defense systems and deliver a devastating blow. It's also possible that Russia will want to get its hands on Iran's hypersonic missile. There is a lot of speculation that Iran might give Russia some of its short-range ballistic missiles, or SRBMs. These are missiles that can fly very fast and hit targets within a few hundred kilometers. Russia might also get Iran's hypersonic missiles, which are even faster and harder to stop. This would be a big problem for the world because it would break the rules of a resolution that was made to stop Iran from making or selling missiles. The resolution expired last year, but it still has a clause that says the old sanctions can come back if Iran breaks the rules until 2025. The Russian Foreign Ministry said something on October 7 it makes people think that Russia wants Iran's SRBMs to use them against Ukraine. Russia has been attacking Ukraine for a long time, and it has used a lot of its own missiles and drones. Last winter, Russia started using Iran's drones, and it used 1,000 of them in six months. In September, Russia used 500 drones in one month, which is a new record. If Russia gets Iran's SRBMs and hypersonic missiles now, Ukraine could be in big trouble. But some people still doubt that Iran will give them to Russia. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments section.